I heard the Lord, the Lord saying to me this, that there are people here that right now for the anointing to destroy a yoke. If you are here and you're saying that, I looked and I saw in a vision, and I saw the Lord beginning to set people free when it comes to any form of bondage, whether it is a bondage or an addiction, but you know there's an evil spirit that is involved in this thing. And there's a tormenting that is going on. I looked at things like nightmares, even people who are tormented when it comes to anxiety, when it comes to unforgiveness, or a bondage that is holding you down. And you're in this place tonight, you're saying, but even if I'm a Christian, and I just keep tripping, I know there's this thing that is holding me back. In this presence, say with you, the presence of God. In the glory of God, there is no allowance for any form of bondage. May every shackle begin to fall off. May every chain begin to be broken. May every force that has held you down, that has held you back, I command it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the blood of Jesus in this place, that freedom be your portion tonight. Freedom be your portion tonight in Jesus' mighty name. If you say, if you say, I'm battling with these things, whether it is anxiety, whether it's rejection, whether it is, but it's a form of bondage that you have tried things in the natural and it is not working. It is not breaking. I want you to get to front so that we can pray for you under the anointing. Quickly come to the front. I know people have traveled far even to be free. Freedom knows no bounds. People that are desperate knows no bounds. I want you. There we go, there we go, that's better, that's better. Even if you're not space in front, just stand in the aisles and they'll let you. I want you to, even wherever you are, you will come to the front eventually. Once I've prayed for them, they'll move you in. But even if you're in the aisles, I want you to pray this prayer with me as if you're in front. And you'll get to the front now. Church, I want you to stretch out your hands. I want the band to flow, to sing and to flow, eh? Atmospheres, eh? Okay. Stretch your hands out towards them, church. Those in front, say these words with me. Say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, forgive me for every sin. I forgive and I choose to let go those who have hurt me, abused me. I forgive them. Forgive me of every sin, every bondage, in Jesus' name, I receive the blood. I close the doors and I bind every spirit. I cast it out in Jesus' name. I renounce the works of darkness 
the spirit of bondage unforgiveness and fear in Jesus name the spirit of rejection in Jesus name I receive my freedom I let everyone go who has hurt me in Jesus name father I pray right now for each one may they the power of the blood of Jesus Christ come upon them right now may every devil every force of darkness that has hindered their call that has hindered their walk limited their movement limited their relationship with you that has held them and bound them by unforgiveness and fear and rejection I bind your works I loose you I command you to let them go right now in Jesus mighty name set them free set them free fire set them free
mountain shake before the demons run and flee at the mention of your name king of majesty the mountain shake before the demons run and flee at the mention of your name king of majesty there is no Let's go. 
geschaffen. the devil is in trouble say it again say the devil is in trouble amen 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 can we give one more praise offering and you can have your seat amen amen i'll just give me like a gentle sound just strings and pads that can just fill there eh? Amen. Are you guys all glad to be here? Yeah. Just help me with the sound. And we want to welcome, we have a lot of people online as well. Um, we want to welcome... Is that the new one or extra? Okay. I don't know what the guys are doing with our streams and internet eh? nothing is working and nobody has informed us or anything i have to see it from the pulpit so chris please sort it out david i don't know why you guys not communicating uh, uh, but we have a lot of people with us we got about over a thousand people right now and we have people from from uh just international from the united states from trinidad from toboga nigeria Gold Coast, Australia, from Texas, Zimbabwe, Caribbean, Grenada, there's a lot of other nations, New Jersey, Houston, Texas, that's in the United States. The ability to, 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 to articulate even the simplest form of revelation, or I'm not the greatest preacher or orator, but one thing I pray, and it's been my prayer from day one, is that God, that there will be an importation from me to others with holy hunger meaning that once they leave my service they are more hungry for your presence they are more in love with your glory they are more they are more hungry after the anointing say with me mantles mantles are going to fall this week for those of you that are hungry the bible says he gave gifts to men from on high are you guys with me he gave gifts to men from on high. Let there be honey be found in the carcass of a lion. Even though it looks like a mess on the outside, there's honey to be found somewhere behind this pulpit here. Others might despise it or mock it, but if they don't know it's coming from you and you take them the honey, it will change them. A mess, listen, listen. The Holy, have your seats, have your seats. The Holy Ghost is oftentimes found in controversy. Acts chapter number 2. Peter stood up and he says, We are not drunk as you suppose. For it is only the third hour, nine hour, six hour, third hour. Is it six hour, third hour? The early hours of the day. <laughs> YouTube is back now. Okay, great. So, um, he said, listen, basically it's 9 a.m. in the morning. Okay. Leon de Prayer version. So, we are not drunk as you suppose. So, what did a move of God look like? It looked like a bunch of drunkards from the outside. When Mary was pregnant with child... Even after the child was born, trust me, there were many who still believed she slept around. He was birthed in controversy. God will clothe him with something that is called dark. Wait, let's go to Habakkuk 3 verse 4. 
But on the screen, Habakkuk 3 verse 4. No, it's not this one. Wait, I'll get you another one. But this is also a good one. Are you guys with me? Go through so long to Isaiah 45 verse 15. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for one thing. Isaiah 45 verse 15. Zedanamoska We thank God for Google. I'm telling you. Because... I don't preach what I prepare, okay? Never. Are you guys with me? Hmm. Truly, you are God. Tell me, say this with me. Say, who hide yourself. God is a God who hides. But listen to this. Go to Psalm, 8, uh, Psalm 97 verse 2. Psalm 97 verse 2. Clouds. And the one translation will say, thick darkness surrounds him. He is a God that will surround and clothe himself in darkness. He is a God who puts honey in the carcass of a lion. Who puts the birth of his son Jesus Christ in the womb of a virgin Mary. In the controversy as if she is embarrassed and shamed. To such a degree that Joseph wanted to put her away. This means that every situation about your life that smells bad or looks down or looks bad. Any moment of embarrassment or shame that the enemy has brought. It has a redemptive process to it. There is a Christ that is hidden somewhere there. The Holy Ghost is found somewhere there. The Holy Spirit hovered over the thick darkness of the waters of the deep. While darkness covered the earth, the Holy Ghost hovered over the deep. Where there's a dark situation, He is busy working in your life. Are you guys with me? Have your seats, have your seats, have your seats. So, so we got into... We got into Mantle, oh no, we got into, into systems this morning. I want to get into, into uh, go through to Exodus 23 verse, I think it is, verse, let me see here. Go through to Exodus 23 verse 20. This whole conference we spoke about, from Krugersdorp to here, we're speaking about gates, dimensions, altars, mantles. You see how gates is people, principalities, angels, demons. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Abraham, I'll make you to possess the gates of the enemy. Gates is a living entity. Lift up you heads, O your gates. How can a gate have a head unless it's alive? So gates we see. We see how Jacob put the stone under his head. And Jacob had an encounter with the Lord. Saw a ladder going into heaven with angels ascending and descending. And he became, after he fought with a man who was the angel of the Lord by the second time he was there. He was called God of, he was called uh, 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 the Jacob generation. Anyone who would seek God's face. God is saying you are the Jacob generation. Which means that Jacob didn't only have an anointing. He didn't only have a mantle. He became a system. A case study. Where God is saying if you have an encounter with me, you have to recognize Jacob. If you want to be blessed, you have to recognize Abraham. Abraham, whoever bless you, I will bless. Whoever curse you, I will curse. So they became a system of that area of blessings or a system of an encounter with God. From that moment on, God, uh, Jacob, was called, you had the God of Abraham, God of Isaac. And he only became the God of Jacob the moment he encountered God. Then God said, I'll make you a case study. 
people will follow. Nobody can think of healing today in the ministry without thinking of Benny Hinn or Catherine Kuhlman. Whether they like them or not. They became, they went beyond a mantle to becoming a system. No one can become an evangelist greatly and be used mightily even in Africa or nations unless they recognize a man called evangelist Reinhard Bonnke. Because God made him a system and an example for evangelism. And there's a system being raised up today. Listen to me. As the Lord said to me this morning, there's a great resignation in the world. But there's a great transition in the church. For you will see that even as many flee and the great resignation flying out of this nation. Listen here. Don't even move to Cape Town. If you're doing it, you're doing it out of fear. Unless God said. I was prophesying over a couple here this morning. Have your seats. And apparently they came with a prayer request that morning. Whether they should go to Cape Town or not. I don't, I don't think they're here. Whether they uh, should. Oh, are you guys there? Is that right? I don't know. You came with a prayer request that you should go to Cape Town or not. Now, you will know in your spirit what was said there. And God will confirm because the last thing a prophet wants to do is give direction. Okay, but I remember prophesying and prophesying and I just see Cape Town. But I'm not saying now that when I said don't move to Cape Town, I'm not meaning you. <laughs> I'm saying... God spoke to you, people can do it, but other people go out of fear. Or they go to another nation, Australia, to fear. Now they're regretting going to Australia. Are you guys with me? And that was a great word. I can tell you as a prophet, that was an inspired moment of God. And that you can actually make a decision on that one if you have peace. Prophecy will always be confirmation of something that is already in you, okay? Uh, where are we? Exodus chapter number 23 verse 20. So I want to share with you something. The place where God shapes great men and women. The place where God shapes great men and women of God. Exodus 23 verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place. First of all, say with me to keep you. I want you to remember three words here. To keep you, number one. Number two, to bring you. Say with me, to bring you. Into the place which I have prepared. Say with me, the place. So He's there to keep you. He's there to bring you into the place. There is a place that the Lord has prepared for you. It is a place called the secret place. Listen to me. I know I've preached on this many times. But I cannot go into this conference and touch on mantles and touch on systems and altars and gates and dimensions and even the anointing without touching on the secret place. It is a place where God shapes. If you look at somebody operating in the supernatural or in any operation of God, you must know they were shaped in a place called the secret place. You might see them for the first time today. And they might look like, but where do they come from? They just appeared. Who's their spiritual father? Where have they come from? They were in the secret. They were hidden. Are you guys with me? It is a place of darkness that God forms and shapes. Is Jackie here? Where's Stefan? Tomorrow. So Pastor Jackie, welcome. Sorry, I'm, I'm confused now. And I heard that that's Stefan's brother. I didn't know when I was prophesying. Because I was looking like him like, Stefan. <laughs> like, it looks like Stefan. And I was like, <laughs> and then I'm seeing, then I'm realizing, okay, no, it's not, it's, it's, it's his brother. Then I'm looking and I'm seeing Jack and I'm like, no, 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 wait. Something, <laughs> something is wrong. Okay. Say with you the secret place. What has shaped me during times of brokenness? I spent hours, nights, through the nights, praying yeah david is sitting he was with me when we were young praying through them just because we loved it hours eight hours nine hours it is a place where god shapes and forms you and if that place is skipped you get something called a premature birth and you can never be successful in ministry never 
or in the destiny that God has called for you. Somebody has to take you and put you back into an incubator that mimics the conditions of the womb for you to form correctly and to be birthed properly. If you take a bird that comes out of an egg and you hatch or you open up the egg for the bird to come out, it will never have the strength to survive in this life. God has made the shell as thick as what it is so that the moment it breaks through it, it has strength to survive the conditions that life will bring against it. And I want to prophesy over a few people. As I'm seeing, I can see things. So just stay with me. But I need to get this message through. Is it okay? There's a very big hunger here. Okay. I don't know what's going on this side, but this side has a hunger. Okay. Okay. Shh. Okay, so say with me a place. It is, listen, a secret place. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go jump to Psalm 91. We're going to get back to this just now. And I don't care if you've heard me preach on this, I will always preach on it from a different angle. As I said, when you see somebody commanding supernatural powers in the, or moving in the operation of God, they are a man and a woman of the secret place. Trust me in this. God is a God who hides himself. Looking for somebody to seek him out. Are you guys with me? Go to Habakkuk 3 verse 4 before we get to Psalm 91. Habakkuk 3 verse 4. His brightness was like the light. He had rays flashing from his hand. And there, say with you, there, there's a place called there. Elijah went to a place called there, where the ravens fed him, where he drank from the brook, and he was fed supernaturally. There is a place called there, the secret place. And there his power was, say it again, there his power was so if somebody casts out devils or heals the sick or prophesies or moves in the anointing they found a power that was hidden away it was hidden so that god could see how hungry they are for seeking it and seeking him are you guys with me but listen in that seeking nothing can happen because matthew 13 verse 11 says you to you it has been given that you may understand. He says, because it has been given to you to know. Say with me, to know. No. Not even to understand. To know. There's a realm of knowing. You just know. It's in your knower right here. Faith is not understood. Faith is known. By faith, we know that the worlds have been put together by, by, by the Word of God. We just know that we know. Things in the Spirit can never be taught or understood. He says, it has been given, say with me, given, to you to know the mysteries, the secret hidden things of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, to others, it has not been given. Go Mark 4 verse 11. So there are some, a group that it has been given. Another group it has not been given. Mark 4 verse 11. And he said to, to, sorry, and he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom. But to those who are, say it again, to those who are outside. Of what? I understand theologically what the scripture means. But I'm speaking and preaching prophetically and it makes theologians upset, but I can't care. You can preach scripture prophetically or revelatory or hermeneutically or exegetically. Are you guys with me? Or allegorically. But we're speaking and preaching prophetically to you right now. That there are those who are on the inside and those who are on the outside when it comes to dimensions. And Jesus said, there are those that are close to me, to you as the disciples. 
I have given it to you. Nothing you have done to work for it. To see. It says to those who are on the outside, all things come in parables. Next verse. Listen to this. So that seeing, say with me, seeing, they may see but not perceive. And hearing they may hear and not understand. There's one or two witches in this place that is already beginning to be set free. Trust me in this now. They have come already for three weeks. And you think, I don't know who you are. For three weeks you're sitting here. But you will not be leaving because you're going to see freedom. I know who you are. One even came out. I know who you are. You see, there is a place in a revelation here. That is not religion or founder. Have you seen? Have you seen? Seeing. Say with me, seeing. So let's have eyes to see and perceive. God will use vessels that are insignificant. He will use vessels that are controversial. He will use vessels that are not accepted. They are a carcass of a lion. But honey is found in the midst of that carcass. They are the body of Mary who looks like she committed adultery. But Christ is being formed inside of her. And those who would never accept, they might look at Jesus like he's Joseph's little boy, the carpenter's son. And never see or perceive the gift. Blip her eyes. Prophetic set of eyes. That you can look at somebody. Somebody might see black. I'm sorry, brown. And, but I can see a gift. Are you guys with me? Oh, I can see, but no, 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 but wait. This happened and that happened. And this is why he is he like this. And the Lord is saying, this is actually who he is. If you honor him, you'll get this out of him. But others might see brown or others might see white and this just that's it. Jesus came in a form that was not accepted. And hearing that I may not hear and not understand. So say with it the mysteries, the secret things. God is about secret things. And I love what Apostle Neville said. The higher we go, the deeper we go with God. You see, there are churches that are great. They're massive. They're big and they're doing a great work for the Lord. But it's shallow. It's not, you won't feel fulfilled, man. And we are not the only church by, or by far that is great. There are many churches that are great. But I'm speaking of the great, the better you will know God, the deeper, the greater the depth will be. It's deep calling unto deep. Spirit unto spirit. It is about changing here, not here. It happens in a place called the secret place. The first thing that God will do in the place of secrets, because Psalm 91, He will break you. What happened? Let me, I'll, I'll get there now. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Are you guys with me? Let's go to, let's go to, uh, Go with me to Exodus 33 somewhere. I'll tell you now. The people are like, Leon, you must start having notes. Oh, just hold on. I think it is 33 verse 22. And the reason I don't do my Bible, I've got a new Bible, so I don't have markings, so I'm not going to find it if I do it like that. So it shall be while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock. I'm not going to go to the other words, but Solomon, Song of Solomon speaks of the clefts of the rock being the secret places. Are you guys with me? The clefts of the rock being the secret places. And he said, I will put you in the secret place. And I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. The man and the woman that abides and dwells in the secret place. And number one, the yad of God is upon their lives. The hand of God covers them like this. Are you guys with me? 
What is the yad? We get the word yada from. Many know yada as praise, and that's good. But it also means to intimately know God. It means to have a predestined knowledge about something. For Jeremiah, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, I ordained you. And I knew you. I yada you. I knew you before you were even formed or ordained in this life. I had a conversation, an intimate relationship with you. We discussed your future and your plan and the blueprint for your life. And I ordained you a prophet before you were even a twinkle in your father's eye. Before you were even a thought in people's heads, you already sat and had a conversation with God. What is happening in the secret place? Yada. Under the yod of God. The hand of protection. Are you guys with me? What is the other thing? The second thing that happens? Say with the brokenness. Jesus, when they came to him, they gave him bread and a lo bre loaves of bread and fish. And they put it, the Bible says he took it in his hands. In his yod. And he broke it. Blessed it. And multiplied it. Which means the moment you are in the yod of God, there's a brokenness that comes. But there's a multiplication that comes upon your life. What is another yod of God? Say with me, the hand of God. Wherever the hand of God came, even if you see it coming upon Ezekiel, the hand of the Lord came and lifted him up into the Spirit. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded up his mantle and he ran and he overtook the chariots of Ahab, which means it will give you supernatural acceleration and speed. But what else does the hand of God mean? When the Bible speaks of the finger of God, Moses standing in front of Pharaoh, by the fourth miracle, the sorcerer says these words. They say, this is none other but the finger of God. Daniel, not being invited to the party of the king. The prophet being left outside. And God said, okay, you're leaving the prophet out. I'm coming in with my hand, taking my finger and writing on the wall. Many, many tekel upasim. Then we see Jesus kneeling down when they caught the woman in the act of adultery and he took his finger and he wrote in the sand. Many say he wrote the sins of those that were doing it. Others said he wrote grace, whatever it might be, he wrote something in the sand. Then Jesus said these words, when you see me cast out devils by the finger of God, not the thumb of God, the finger, you will know that the kingdom of God has come upon you. Where you see devils cast out, know that the kingdom is in that church. Where there is deliverance, Jesus is present all the time. He's finding peace there. He's finding pleasure and he rejoices being there. I was in a church, I just I was in a church around the corner. I think they shut down. I think they closed down. I was preaching there long ago. And I was casting out devils. And the pastor came to me after service. He says, Listen, we're not doing that in the church. I said, Why? What do you mean? He says, No, there are little children here and stuff. I said, Your children need to see this. He said, No, we don't do it in the sanctuary, you know. We must do it outside. Yet Jesus casted out devils in the temple. Now he has no church left. Okay. Another person actually, uh, yes, Apostle Neville, I was invited to this, to this church, a big church. I'm not going to say for the sake of, 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 of just, uh, uh, for sensitivity, I won't say where it is, but I was invited to this big church and we had revival like in this country. It was a big church, about 3,000 people. And we're having meetings and uh, 
the senior pastor was at the back. He was so upset with me. He was standing with the leather jacket. I'll never forget it. And I'm ministering to all the youth. There was a lot of youth. Probably about 800. Also, Stefan was with me there. And, uh, and we're ministering and we're preaching and everything. And the Lord said to me, go warn him of a woman that is in his life and he's going to lose his ministry. So I walked to the man. I, I, he doesn't even want to hug me or anything. He's so upset. I don't know for what he's upset. And uh, I just said to him, I said, look, just be careful. One, two, three. And he said, yes. And he left the meeting. He walked out. He says, in the pause. We carried on with the youth meeting. No church left. A year later, it came out. God will send somebody inside. I might have looked so insignificant. I was just a young kid with a torn, literally torn shirt. We had no money. The shirt was like, if you look at the video that I have, it's like faded through still. And we're preaching fire. And young people are getting saved. And they were just looking at me, who's this guy? Say with you the secret place. So what does the yad mean? So the finger usually refers to the prophet, but let's leave that. What is the yad? Say with me, the hand. What is the hand? Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. When you're in the secret place, you're in a covering of a church. You're planted and rooted in the local church. These guys that are saying they're in their caves, you know, and uh, they leave the church, they season this over and they need to... Look, stop being weird. God does not work outside of His local church. Are you guys with me? Let's get, let's get through it quickly. I want to just minister to one or two people. So the secret place. is a place where men and women are being shaped. Let me, let me explain this. Men and women of God are being shaped. It's, it's a, uh, once you are there, nobody writes about you. Nobody speaks about the great miracles you're doing. For, for some reason, every miracle you're doing and every accurate prophecy you're saying never gets publicized. Because you are in secret. Some of their 10 years, some of their 20 years, some of their 30 years. But the key is to stay the time that you are in there. Everything about the secret place is timing. You see, a baby has to be the full term to be given birth properly. It is timing. Say with me, timing. God shapes you according to timing. Are you guys with me? Uh, I just, are we going to minister to people now? I don't want to, I, I, I'll do it now. I'm just going to make sure that I see individuals that I saw earlier. It's a place where God takes and makes men and women great. Meaning, no one speaks of you in that place. The pastor doesn't recognize you. Leon doesn't greet you. He doesn't thank you from the pulpit. He doesn't even see you cleaning the toilet, you're washing the floors, you're doing everything. But it feels like nobody is accepting you. Welcome. I'm serious. There's a process to become great. It is the process of knowing your time of hiding and your time of manifestation. John the Baptist was hidden for 30 years until the day of his manifestation. Jesus was hidden for 30 years. Meaning, if God found it worthy and needed for His own Son to go through a 30-year process, what makes us better? To think that three months, God, you don't want to use me? I'm speaking about a process to greatness. If there's one thing I can attribute, what God has done in our lives, and not that we have achieved greatness or success in any way, but just a little bit that we've achieved in the kingdom. I can't put it past two things. The secret place, my relationship with God, and honoring, understanding the difference of graces. Accepting the difference of graces. And understanding, but wait. If there's a mantle, there's three ways to get that mantle. Three steps towards getting a mantle. When I speak about a mantle, I'm speaking about ancient mantles. You see, a mantle isn't just appearing. It comes from a history line that is ancient. And let me not even speak about the ancient ones in heaven. Let's leave that one for now. Because Daniel got a mantle from them. 
John received secrets from them. Daniel was told he's in the claws of the magicians, the sorcerers, the flesh eaters, and the astrologist or whatever uh, astrologist. That he was in their level, but he was 10 times more and 10 times better. Because he had a place where he knelt down for three times a day. He had a prayer life in a secret place. When they looked at him, they said that, you listen, yeah, you have supernatural powers, but the spirit of the Holy God is in you. These others have spirits, but the spirit of the Holy God is in you. And then it goes on, it says this, light and wisdom of the Holy Gods, of such as Holy Gods is in him. In the other translation, it says light and wisdom of the ancient ones is in him. There are secrets and hidden things that God decides to share with certain people by His choosing and His election. He decides. No man decides. What it makes us, we can only align ourselves. I can do three things to get a mantle. I can, number one, ask and it will be given. I can keep asking. Then I can seek violently. Say with me, violently. Violently violent seeking but then there's a third realm and it is not knocking it is what I call a mantle unless you get to somebody in that dimension you see why does he say knock and the door shall be opened he doesn't say the third way to do it is by knocking he said the third way by doing it is finding the person that is in a dimension that when you knock they can open up a door for you from the inside out it is one key one knock it is like i said this morning a knocking in your spirit it is your you can sit in the church now and knock in your spirit until it pulls on the prophet man inside of me are you guys with me say with me knocking it is a spiritual perception it is a principle that you're doing have you seats it is something in you that just knocks. And places, when we say, put a demand, what are we saying? Knock. So that somebody on the inside can open up the door. So how do I get a mantle? I ask, I seek, and then I get to a person who has the mantle. And I knock, and I knock, and I knock, and I knock, and I knock. And they take the key, and they simply open. While I've prayed, and I've fasted, Prayer and fasting will not do for you what knocking will do for you. And I'm not saying don't pray and fast. It's just not the way that mantles come. Because God chooses to use men in the Bible. Are you guys with me? And as I said this morning, one of the greatest revivals will break out. Once we understand the multiplicity of the body, but that God uses man. Because you have these people that are so spiritual and they say, no, 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 but, but you know, I can just pray and do it myself. Go and try. Your ministry will be in a living room 30 years from now. Yet your secret and the mantle you so desperately want is, is locked up in someone. Which can simply just open the door for you. That's it. Jesus says it is given to you. Are you guys with me? Let's go back to um, uh, Exodus 30, verse 20. Zerano. Mm -hmm. I'll close off with this. What is the other? I, I can give you, I can preach on the secret place for a weekend. Um, but I'm just giving you three keys. I can speak about the secret place being an incubator, the secret place meaning business with God, the secret place I can go into a lot of things. The secret place is the yard that we got in. It's the shaping and the forming of great man. Moses was there. Mary was there. David was there. Joseph was there. Jesus was there. Paul was there. For 10 to 12 years. Are you guys with me? Three years alone, not conferring with any flesh or blood. Taken up into heaven, seeing visions and revelations that it is not even lawful for a man to utter such things. 
But what it was spending time in the secret place where, where no one recognizes you. Listen. You can have the greatest miracle, no TV camera will be there. And if it is there, it will just break. It will not, God will not allow it to get onto TV. Because you are not ready. And the moment you go out early, your destiny is destroyed. It's a premature birth. Say with me, shaping. So be in the secret. In the secret, no one talks about you. In the secret, you wish to be back there when you are in the day where God uses you because you will have no time to spend with Him again. And if that time is not completed and fulfilled in the secret place, it's like you will be sabotaged for your ministry going forward. Are you guys with me? What did I do in the secret place? Oh my God, for years. 10 years, 12 years, I was beaten, broken, prayed, fasted, studied the word. Everybody did their things. Opportunities were given to me left, right, and center. One opportunity after the other, and the Lord said, no, it's not my time. What did Jesus say? He says, do not go and tell them. Jesus either did two things. Either he knew it wasn't his timing yet, when he did a miracle and he said, go and tell no one, or he applied the greatest tactic of marketing, called exclusivity when you tell somebody don't do it they will do it so either he was operating two things but he knew his time of manifestation his time of glorification he said to his own mother my time has not come yet are you guys with me say with me the secret place it is the place where destinies are birthed it is the place of the Most High, meaning you occupy the space of the Most High. His hand is upon you. It is the penthouse of penthouses. It is the Most High, El Elohim. Are you guys with me? The highest place. That once you are there, you would think you are in the lowest, yet God is saying you are in the highest place. It is the secret place. So listen, let's go to Exodus chapter number 23 verse 20. We have a lot of people on right now, over 1,200 people. And I want to ask those who are on YouTube, just like the broadcast for us, please, it'll have really help for traffic and those. Uh, just like the broadcast for those who are on YouTube and let us know once you have. And I see so many people, there's so many nations, like I said, and there's much more on now, but afterwards we read the messages and people are like, I'm from this nation, I'm from that nation, I'm from this nation. And, and uh, I think I released a prophecy for Australia yesterday morning. And within a few hours, it reached 30,000 people. Within a few hours. I, I think it is on 4,000 likes or something like that now, but, and it reached, it's now probably on 60,000 people. And, uh, but what is God doing is allowing the word of the Lord from this pulpit to go out. As I said to you, and I remember the Lord said to me, what comes at the place of secret to secret place? So with his sacrifice. The, it is there where God will shape you. He will speak to you. It is there where his voice will affirm you. And unless it happens there, it will not happen publicly. And whatever happens publicly is what took place in the secret place. Are you guys with me? Exodus 23 verse 20. So behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared for you. Go through verse 21. Go verse 22. Verse 22. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, say this with me, then I will be an enemy to your enemies, an adversary to your adversaries. In the secret place, God will vindicate you. If somebody, listen, in the secret place, you are property of God. He owns you. He has bought you with a price. If the devil touches you, the devil is in trouble. If a man touches you, if they stretch out their hands towards you, they are touching God's property. And he said, my enemies will be, your enemies will be my enemies. I will become an enemy to your enemy, an adversary to your adversaries.
Say with me, the devil is in trouble. Say it again. Say the devil is in trouble. Listen, listen, listen. Have your seats, have your seats. Say with me, the secret place. God will become an enemy to your enemies. I can go on with this verse, with this chapter, until it's late night. So let me leave it right there. I want to get to the place. I want to, I want, I want to minister to you, just two or three people, three or four people here, or as the Holy Spirit leads. But the secret is the secret place. There are young people here that are so hungry for the call of God. It starts on your knees in the place called secret, where there is no phone, where there is no distraction. It is the place of the shut door where Jesus said, go into the, into the secret place where my father dwells. No, no, sorry, where my father lives, meaning God lives in the secret place. God is everywhere, but he cannot be found everywhere. I'm going to say it again. God is everywhere, but he cannot be found everywhere. Do you have this atmosphere at your work? No. Have a physical place where you make it to God, where God knows it is a place that you mean business with him. God is everywhere. He is, is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. Everywhere at the same time. But yet men can't find Him anywhere. But if you have a secret place, an altar in your house, that is dedicated unto Him, you can sit in your living room and it is okay. The presence is there. But the moment you walk into that place called the secret place, the Bible says God lives there. You see, angels are legalistic creatures. They cannot understand the blood of Christ because they've never experienced it. They cannot understand grace because they've never experienced it. They were never redeemed. So they don't understand how we can get into the throne room by grace. They need to understand protocol. They are legalistic creatures. They come from the Old Testament. They take your prayers with the altar of incense. They bring it before the throne room of God. Take it into before the Lord and prayers are answered by angels. But they know protocol and legalistic ways of doing things. That's why when it was Jacob, when it was Jacob at the place called Bethel, where there was an altar which Abraham has built, angels were there, not at another place. Because they understand, but wait, God lives by an altar where there's sacrifice. We dwell there. So Abraham did an did a, did a, did a offering there, did an altar there. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob comes, a descendant, just walking past that place, sleeping, seeing the angels. Others have walked past, they seeing nothing. But the one in the bloodline had the ability to see. When we say that there's importation from this pulpit, it means where I've seen angels, where I've had the supernatural intervened, in my life where we have seen the power to cast out devils to heal the sick that you can do the same and more whatever encounter i had you will have and more but it takes a hunger in your spirit to say i'm hungry for god i don't care how many hours of prayer how many days of fasting how many how many energy it takes to press in and push in are you guys with me? Say, I'm hungry for the secret place. Have your seats, have your seats. So then Jacob is building this altar and angels are staying right there. Which means that angels dwell at a place called the secret place and where altars are. They just believe that that's where God is. Understand, they don't understand grace. When angels look at you, they can never testify of the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that angels have looked into the things. Let me, let me get it for you. Are you guys with me? Say with me the secret place. It, it, the scripture says that angels desired to look into these things that you and I have. It has been a desire in them. Knowing that they can never attain. They were never fallen and redeemed by the blood. Where they can have a testimony to say, I was lost, but now I am saved. They can never do that. 
That is why when you get into heaven, angels will be asking you how it felt. And they would still not be able to comprehend. Angels have desired the things that you have. They look at you with a beholding in their eyes. Thinking, but wait, these people have such an opportunity. Where does it start? Secret place. Say with me, secret place. It's the development for every call and destiny in this room right now. If you can understand and catch this revelation and leave this place with a hunger in your heart. If you don't understand, let that devil go that is blinding you. And I'm serious. Either it's somebody that is not saved, that's fine. The natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. Or there's a devil that has put a veil upon but get into the things of the Spirit. Are you guys with me? Let me just minister to, 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 to a few people. Let's just close our eyes wherever we are. I want you to relax, focus upon Him. Zaros, get the band up. Leronos, Kadridin. Zedano. I saw people here. Um, can I pray for you? Yes. Marundo Zenda Hana. Can I pray for that guy sitting there with a green shirt? Yes. Can I pray for you? I have a word for you. Leros Kebre Delebre. Can I pray for you? Yes, yeah. Oh, you both come, both come. What did I see? There are people here that still needs to be set free. I want to encourage you not to miss one evening. Where there's revival, one of the first things that will happen, and that's what I said to the Lord, I was praying this afternoon. Apostle Neville, this was my prayer, I said, I said, God, I said, let devils flee tonight as a sign that the kingdom is here. Because if it's not, if it's not Gerard, then it is the police. If it's not the police, then it's this thing and that thing. And let me tell you, they'll never stop us from having meetings. Because we have a bunch of devils here in the shopping center. And I say it like that. And they've never been able to prevail. There was a gay nightclub here at the bottom. While we were praising and worshiping up here, they were falling down, manifesting on the dance floor. And we said within three months, it will be closed. And three months, it was closed. I mean, we don't know if it is a he or a she or a it, but... When, the, when we would come down after the service, I mean, there was manifestations down there. The kingdom of God is real. Light and darkness is real. You better believe it. Because if you don't, you're going to be done in greatly. Are you guys with me? Are you guys married, the two of you? Not? Are you together? Not. Huh? Used to be together, but I mean, okay. Okay. But I had a word for you when you came to the front, eh, earlier. Come for me. Let her know. Stefan's brother looks just like him. And I didn't know it was you when I prophesied with you the other day. Chris told me directly after the prophecy that it was you. And then they told me that every time I prophesy the same thing over you. That's when you know it's a prophet. Or that it's God that is now getting like uh, serious. I can really prophesy with a lot of people. But what we're going to do is Tuesday night, um, there's going to be a night of mantles. 
But when we pray for everybody, I'm going to be prophesying of a lot of people. We're going to do it differently than Krugerstorp. We'll do a ring of fire, so it's a bit more order. And uh, Krugerstorp was just a bit chaotic because we don't have space there like here. So we'll do a ring of fire and we'll go. But this is what I heard the Lord say. As I'm preaching, I looked. And as you were sitting there, I saw the yad of God. And the Lord mentioned to me, that a time is over and a time has begun. A time is over and a time has begun. Because I looked and I'm, I'm seeing on you like the Lord is whispering to me in area of business. And I saw, now I have to be very careful. I saw utensils or food or catering or something like that. That something is going to happen or open up. I don't know what it is, but I saw the Lord saying to me that in that area, I'm going to give an idea or something like that. And you will see how I will unlock things that is in you to come out. For a time is over and a time has begun. For business. And then I looked and the Lord said to me, something with accommodation. It's like I'm standing. I don't know how to say it. It's like you are walking in a, in a guest house, you know. And I'm seeing something with accommodation and an idea that God is going to give this couple here. And I saw these things coming in the areas of breakthrough. Now maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't. I have absolutely no idea. But what the enemy has meant for evil, God will turn for his good. Because they said you will not be able to do one, two, three. And see now, says the Lord, how I will clean and wipe away the slate. Clean. And the signature that has been held against you, the writing of requirement that has been held against you, will be supernaturally wiped away, says the Spirit of God. Because I have found something pleasing. For do not be worried about your family, says the Lord. For my hand will be over them, and not one will be lost, says the Spirit. Because the Lord is saying, even now, I will put a hedge of protection over your family. But I saw the blessing of God beginning to spring out once again upon this family. And I heard catering or food or something like that. And then I saw accommodation. And then the Lord is taking me from there. And I'm seeing something when it comes to transport. And then I saw a door that is going to open. But the Lord is saying, everything will be done by my spirit. In Jesus' name.
Ashka Adri Delibri Deno Muskit. Give me your hand. If I want to tell you what the Lord said to me before I pray with you for that. Um, when I walked past you and I laid hands on you earlier, the Lord said to me, Tell her her days is being renewed. But there's something fresh is coming. Where the enemy has taken a lot of finances away, a lot of things away, and sometimes even loneliness that has come in. The Spirit of the Lord has said, You will see how I will bring healing and every curse over your body. Because as I walked past, I felt that there was something with your body. That's why I asked you. That it stops and ends with you. It does not go further with you or with your family below you. I command healing. I'm looking, what I was asking is what your one son was doing and you just said to me he's working somewhere because I keep looking at somebody in the family that is connected to computers. Huh? Is he here? What does, he, does he do computers? Huh? What do you do? What do you do, computers? Or... Sorry? Data centers. Because the Lord said to just stand there with the mic there, say. The Lord said this to me. The son that has to do something with computers. I'm gonna to touch his life. But they say in the workplace, in the area of that, there's going to be a shifting and a promotion, something that is gonna bring a financial blessing to this family. Now I pray that as I speak as a prophet. That you will see within 12 months and we can make it six months if we want. That you will see a change that will take place. A conversation that is going to be happening in the workplace. And God is going to do something where it's going to shift. Because I looked at questions and questions and questions. For the Lord is saying the questions that there is. I will bring, sh I will bring peace to your heart son. I'll bring clarity. And there will be like a voice that will speak behind you to tell you what direction to go into. But you will see promotion coming and I'll give you an idea. Because the enemy has placed a limitation upon your life from a young age. And has tried to limit you in the area of creativity and trying to believe in yourself fully. Now let's just listen to me in this. Because the Lord is saying, as I have come to Gideon, so I come to you. Come stand here. As I have visited Gideon, so I visit you. Come stand. So as I visit Gideon, so I visit you. And I say, says the Lord, arise mighty man of valor. Because even when you were driving here, I saw prayers going up before the throne of God, of others. But I looked at your heart and I see a yearning and I see somebody that is hungry after God. But I see somebody that was limited when they were young. And the Lord is saying it is time to take off the limitation. As I've come to Gideon, so I come to you to say, arise mighty warrior. Because it doesn't matter how others have looked at you or what the enemy has placed upon you. The lid is going to be broken. And if this word is received today, you will see how by this prophetic word, you'll see things being cut off and things being broken. Because the enemy has tried to entangle and tried to bring strings and hooks in and pull you to the left and pull you to the right. Yet there was a pulling of God and it was like this many directions. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to capture your heart. I'm going to make, make it and I make it mine, says the Lord. For I've paid a price for it. For I own you, says the Lord, and you are mine. And I'll not let you or give you to anyone else. And you'll see how I will touch your heart. For where the enemy has tried to hurt your heart, even with authority figures. Even as a wall that was built up. The Lord is saying, see how I will begin to bring healing to you. In Jesus' name. That every form of pain will leave your life. In Jesus' name. Pray. Take 
take authority over the spirits of infirmity. I rebuke the curse of osteoporosis. I command every fiber of your being to come alive and respond to this word and respond to the spirit of God. I blow the pain away. I command it to flee from your life. I break this curse. I break the curse in the blood from the family in Jesus name. When I, when I laid my eyes on you, what is your name? Leon. Sorry? Leon. Leon. When I laid my eyes on you, I saw a lot of pain. When I came past here and I prayed for you, I put my hand here, if you would remember. And the Lord said to me, this man went through a lot of pain. That was not meant for him to have gone through. And there was a lot of temptations that was not meant for him to have gone through. And the Lord said to me, tell him, I am close to the broken hearted. Yes. And you will see from this night how a voice will come to you. And the presence of God that you will feel even here right now will remain upon you for a few days. And he will he'll feel like he's close to you. And the Lord is saying it is just as a sign that I've always been there. Because the enemy has tried to take you to run or try to take you away. But I saw pain and I saw like a young boy being beaten. And it will be the end when it comes to thoughts of condemnation. Yes. And thoughts of guilt. And thoughts of shame. An embarrassment for you'll see my light and my love and you'll see how deliverance will come to that part of your soul says the Spirit of God because where the enemy wanted to point a finger and blame and accuse it is not going to take place says the Lord for where the pointing of the finger was you will see how I'll remove the pointing of the finger for the Lord is saying I'm close to you and I'm going to meet you for even where the enemy wants to bring a physical thing into your body I curse it. I pray for protection of your body. Because there's a call in you to lead many and even in the area to make money. And it's the exact area where the enemy has attacked you. Because it is like he has blocked a certain area in your mind where you have the ability to make money. I pray right now as a prophet, I unlock and I open. That the key of prosperity will come upon you. But more than that, that the Father's heart will be revealed to you. Because that is what's been missing for so long. Because there's been a desperateness of trying to belong and trying to seek approval. And the Lord is saying, I have accepted you. I have received you. And where there was the lack of that on the earth, you'll see that I'm a good Father. In Jesus' name. What is your name? Dwayne. Sorry? Dwayne. Dwayne, stand here for me. Lasko Are you married? Or married? Were you married or not? Not. Are you guys still with us? Yes. Don't miss one night, please. You you don't want to miss from tomorrow night, Apostle Neville is gonna take it higher and higher. Tuesday night, mantles. Where you are right now, the Lord has shown me, in your life, He's doing a turnaround and a change. And everything is changing where you are at. Because I've called you, son, says the Lord. I'll put my spirit upon you. There's hidden things and mysteries because in you is a prophet and in you is an evangelist. Listen to me. You will hear his voice clearly, says the Lord. You'll hear my voice clearly, says the Lord. Because I have placed a mantle that will come upon your life. I've called you since that young age, even at five. Because I saw a lot of heartache. Or a lot of hardships. But the Lord says, I have been with him. And the Lord is showing me 
how death tried to come many times. But my grace and favor has protected him. Because even as I'm standing by you, there's an angel of the Lord standing behind you. For I see how this angel is there for as a calling to you. When it comes to the prophetic and the evangelistic. For the Lord is saying, open your heart to me. And seek me like you've never sought me before. And you will see I will take your life and change it. For the changing that is beginning to take place and the winds of change that is beginning to blow, says the Lord. I will take your life and I'll use it for the glory. And you will see a baptism of fire that will come. But more than this, but this fire upon you will reach your family and will reach many that is trying to abandon you or try to push you away. And I will cause your hands to be laid upon many. And you will baptize and you'll put by fire, but you'll move in the supernatural and you'll preach under an anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Fire now. Lift them up, lift them up, lift them up, lift them up. Fire! Fresh, fresh, fresh. Come on, give Jesus a praise offering, church. Praise him, praise him. Let's sit in our mind. Brisco ega noska ete kena mambriosko. Zerano. Wherever you are, just keep standing. I want you all to close your eyes for me. I want everyone to close their eyes for me right now. No one looking around in this atmosphere. So this is very pivotal and important that I do this now. Let me say it like this, as I said this morning. There's not much time left. I'm going to say it again. There's not much time left. The rapture can take place tonight. It can take place in 10 years. But the thing is, prophetic fulfillment is there. I said, people like building temple, building temple. As if like it'll take a hundred years to build a temple. These days it takes three days. Do not let that think, okay, but we still have time. No. The time can be now. Your time can be the moment you walk out here. I thank God. That is by the protection of God's grace that is upon Chara's life that is safe. But it can happen in one second. Especially if you're in a place where God wants to use you. Or if you're in a place where you're not in the purpose of God for your life. COVID can take you tomorrow. God accidents can happen any moment. The thing is life is but a vapor. Our days is nothing in front of you. And there are people here tonight. And you're saying to me, Leon, I do not have, you're talking like this, but I do not have the surety, assurance of salvation upon my life. I don't know. Maybe you have never given your life to the Lord. Maybe you've never made that full commitment to say, that's it. I'm giving everything and I'm giving my life to the Lord. I surrender to Him. Or maybe you have, but you have backslidden. And you know that your relationship with God is not right. And that has brought that uncertainty in of not having a 100% assurance of where you will be if life has to end now. I know I was prayed as a person that was lost on drugs. One prayer where my heart meant it. And I drugged in. Changed everything. And set my destiny on course. When we're speaking about destiny and purpose and the secret place, none of these things is possible without this step being taken. And God is going to use so many here, but there are people that have to either come back to Him or give their lives to Him afresh or give their lives to Him for the first time. As I said, there's not much time left. But I want this to be done under the conviction of the Holy Ghost. You will feel him knocking at your door, at your heart right now and say, but it's the Holy Spirit that is pushing, that is convicting, that is knocking. 
and saying, yes, it is you. Even though you think you're fine, if that knocking of the Holy Ghost is there, it is because He is prompting you and prodding you. Because your life might not be right at this moment. It's one prayer. If you're saying, Leon, I don't know where I will go if I have to die today. I do not have the assurance that I have to stand in heaven in front of God that He will allow me in or not. You see, salvation is 100% assurance. 100% assurance. He gives us the Holy Ghost to seal us unto salvation as a seal that I have no doubt in me that heaven is my destination. And if that is not there, we have to rethink our relationship with God. And I want to ask if you're saying, Leon, that is me. I don't know if my life is right with Him right now. I don't know where I'm going if I have to pass away now, if something has to happen now. Maybe I have never given my life to the Lord. I want to do it now. Or maybe I have before, uh, but I have lost that fire and that passion. And I want to come back to Him right now. If that is you while everybody's eyes is closed, I want you to lift up your hand for me that I can just see. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see those hands. Thank you so much. I see that hand. That's beautiful. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. That is beautiful. I see that hand. I see that hand. I want you quickly for me. Those who have raised their hands, get out of your seats. I need to pray for you. Come to the front here. Come to the front here. Those who raised, let's give them a hand, guys. Come on, church. Everyone that has raised their hands, come. Leros, I want to pray for you. Come to the front. Come to the front. Come to the front. Bring them to the front. Let's give Come on, let's give Jesus a better praise offering. Come on. Serano, Seranos. Come, 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 come. Now, church, I want you to stretch out your hands towards them and everyone that is here in front. Let me tell you, this decision is no embarrassment. Maybe you're standing here with shame because the devil wants to close you with shame. And he has. The moment we pray for you is the moment we turn around. I want to prophesy over you. That was the other person I saw. Come stand here. Come, stand, come, come, come stand here. What's your name? Sydney. Is that you? Huh? God loves you so much, eh? I didn't know it was you. I didn't know it was you, but I want to tell you this. The destiny and the call never leaves. The call never departs. And it doesn't matter whatever shame, whatever embarrassment, whatever there's done. Is the devil that is just trying to make you embarrassed by this. But, but if you have been made in the image of God. The devil would always want to pervert that thing or try to make you embarrassed or shame. The destiny remains. Yes. The past is wiped away in one second. Yes. Because the father love that there has never been. Not because it might not have given, want to given from the Father. There was the enemy has come in and cut and brought things because of the call that you carry. I take authority over the strong man against your life. Your power is broken this night. Your power is broken this night. You strong man that has bound him, I command you to set him free. Every destiny stealer and destiny destroyer, I command you to set him free. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the blood of Jesus Christ, set him free. Bring out the call of God upon his life. Father, like never before, touch his heart, touch his heart. Every shame that the enemy has brought upon him, give him double, a double portion 
like never before where the enemy has stolen a lot of finances you give him double <laughs> deliver him and set him free now deliver him and set him free set him free set him free now set him free I paint this work upon your life set him free 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 Sit there you go, 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 there you go. Leso Cabrasco, there you go, there you go, there you go. Brasco, there you go. Okay, those who are standing in front, listen to me. I want you to pray this prayer with me. I prayed this prayer once. And you still stay in front, eh? <laughs> um, I want you to pray this prayer with you. I want you to mean it out of your heart and speak it out of your mouth. Take your mask off for this sake. If you want to, you don't have to. If you want to, so that I can see you. Because Jesus wants to see your lips moving. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay. But... The Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Say with me. Stretch out your hands towards them, church. I want everybody in front. Raise your hands to the Lord. Say, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, forgive me. I repent of every sin. I ask your forgiveness of running away from you. This night, this night, I healed my life. I, life. I surrender to you. Surrender to you. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, peel my life. Jesus, Jesus I, believe I believe that you are Lord of my life. Of my life. I, believe I believe you died upon the cross, upon the cross. rose again, rose. seated at the right hand of the Father. Of the Father. I receive the power of your blood that washes my sins as far as the east is from the west I believe if I have to die tonight heaven is my destination I receive the calling of God the destiny of God for my life in Jesus mighty name I'm going to come and pray for you one by one. I want you to stand just like this. And after I pray for you, somebody's going to walk with you to the back. Receive the Holy Ghost. There we go. Receive the Holy Spirit. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Ushers, don't let them go. Let them walk with them. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive him, there you go. Receive the Holy Ghost, there you go. There you go. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. There's a great call on your life. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive him. Receive him. Receive the Holy Ghost. Give Jesus a praise offering. They're going to walk with you. Ushers are going to walk with you just to give you something. Let's raise our hands, church. Let's raise our hands. Father, we thank you for your presence, your glory. We thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the protection of everyone in this meeting. You'll bring us back safely tomorrow. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Tomorrow, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock. God bless you.